Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Street racing is something we don't talk a lot about here, but we're familiar with the concept and the idea that people on the streets might take their cars out and race against one another. It happens from time to time. It's often called drag racing. And uh, drag racing on the streets uh, in Michigan is a very serious thing. You can get charged with a misdemeanor for it, six points on your license, possible jail time, monstrous fines and costs. But the problem is that the fact that the law is on the books does not deter everyone. That's true of most laws. There's always people out there who want to break the laws. So a story out of Michigan. Steve sent it to me, not me, another guy named Steve. Drag racing could cost drivers their vehicles under proposed Flint ordinance change. Flint is proposing an ordinance that would allow police to seize the cars from people who drag race and keep them. And that would be part of the punishment for drag racing. Now, it's a proposed ordinance in the city of Flint. The city of Flint, of course, is famous for a couple of reasons. Uh, it was the star of the movie Roger and Me, um, because Roger didn't spend much time on camera. It was also the spot of the uh, drinking water crisis uh, a while back. So Ron Fonger wrote this story for M Live. Uh, drag racing in Flint could cost drivers their vehicles under a revised ordinance that's being reviewed by the city council. Angela Wheeler, who is the city attorney, told the council the new proposed ordinance would declare drag racing a public nuisance and would allow the city to impound and seize vehicles, tools, equipment, uh, and trailers used in connection with racing vehicles. So in theory, two vehicles are drag racing someplace. The cops show up, they catch them. They can grab the vehicles. Uh, presumably, if nearby they've got a trailer, it's got tools in it, they can seize that too. The question is, I don't know, could they go to the person's house and seize their stuff from there? Don't know about that just yet. This would also open a path for the city to recover the cost of towing and storing vehicles involved in racing and provide for the city to recover the cost of prosecuting cases. And of course, they're already getting into some weeds here with respect to their explanation because the cost of towing and storing is always passed along to the car owner. And most of these people, I suspect, who are drag racing would want their cars back. The idea that some guy's out drag racing in a car, it gets seized and he goes, ah, I guess I'll walk away from it. Um, that's not going to happen. But if it does, you can auction a vehicle off anyways due to the storage. So I, I, I think that's kind of a, a red herring there. Council President Kate Field said during a uh, recent committee meeting, we're getting many, many complaints about it. It's very dangerous. Hopefully the changes in this ordinance are something the citizens of Flint will applaud. The mayor who proposed the changes said they are needed to protect public safety. More than a decade ago, while serving as a city councilman, the mayor helped to stop former mayor Don Williamson's plan to build a sanctioned drag strip on a street near the Flint Children's Museum. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was an idea that didn't go over very well. But he had suggested that, hey, look, if we can't get these people to stop drag racing, why don't we just give them a street and let them race there? Uh, and that, that, like I said, didn't, didn't happen. The mayor said regarding street racing, it's all over the place. It's transient. It moves and it morphs. What we have to do is curb the bad behavior. The proposed new ordinance says drag racing on public streets without a permit results not only in unsafe traffic conditions for other vehicles, playing children and pedestrians, but also attracts rowdy, uncivil, intimidating, and criminal activity, including gambling upon the outcome of the races, which engenders fear and disinvestment among neighborhood residents and prevents the full and peaceful enjoyment of the use of their property. It otherwise impacts negativity on the health, safety, and welfare of the community. Now, you'll notice it says the ordinance says drag racing without a permit implies that you can get a permit for this, right? So I, I'm, I'm curious to know uh, if Flint City offers permits for drag racing, how much the permit is and what the permit allows. Um, or maybe that's the joke. I don't know. Racing is defined in the proposed ordinance as racing one vehicle. <laughs> It better be better than this. You can't have a definition that actually uses the word itself to define itself. A microphone is a microphone. A widget is a widget. Racing is defined as racing. One vehicle against another or against a time or speed measuring device, whether or not there is an agreement in advance to race or driving a vehicle at excessively high rates of speed. Boom, there you go. So they're already saying racing could be you by yourself. And this means that a severe speeding ticket in Flint could result in your car being 
impounded along with your tools, your uh, trailer, and your other equipment. But yeah, racing is defined as, among other things, driving a vehicle at excessively high rates of speed. And one of the things is, and I, again, I would have to see more definitions if they have them, uh, an excessively high rate of speed is defined as any speed 15 miles per hour or more over the posted speed limit. Here's a question for you. Can you be racing below the speed limit? And the reason I ask that is that some vehicles can get up to the speed limit very, very quickly. And so if I'm next to you and we're at a light and we give each other that look, you know the look. <laughs> we give each other that look. The light turns green and we both stomp on it. We bring it right up the speed limit and then we lift. Were we racing? Were we racing? Well, it is racing one vehicle against another or... So I guess technically speaking, we could be considered racing. But had we broken any laws prior to this if, this, if this ordinance had been passed? So that's another question. The ordinance also covers contests of driving prowess, such as drifting, sliding, or donuts. And they put donuts in quotes. <laughs> that are recklessly dangerous and could cause serious injury or death or create an impediment to traffic. By the way, all of those things are already reckless driving. Michigan's already got a crime in the books called reckless driving, and these all are possibly reckless driving if it um, could cause serious injury or death or create an impediment to traffic. It's reckless driving. So you could already, you know, throw the book at these people, find them, and uh, take away their licenses and so on. But it, now apparently the, the key here is they want to take the cars because they think the cars are, are the key to all of this. Um, drag racers have been a staple in Flint for generations. Um, and they've shifted where they race in the past in response to attempted police crackdowns. Uh, with no guardrails, official rules or regulations, they've also proven dangerous. Because as you know, <laughs> rules and regulations make things safe. Two teen spectators were hit and injured during illegal races 10 years ago. Before that, there were at least two fatal crashes killing three people over a 30-year span, according to MLive and the Flint Journal looking through their files. Ten years ago, the council considered changing Flint's ordinance on drag racing to allow vehicle seizures, but the idea was never adopted. I, I'm not saying that I'm in favor of street racing. Um, I'm merely pointing out that this statute, unless it's written better than it's described here, uh, has issues. It has issues. And one of them is simply to define racing as racing uh, is, is a rookie mistake. Uh, but also... Um, there are laws on the books that already cover all of these things. The only difference is the seizure of vehicles. And so you might say, well, Steve, then obviously this is a good law. I mean, they're, they're trying to change the law to do something good. Well, all you got to do is say, we're going to take those previous laws that are already on the books, including the law on drag racing and including the law on reckless driving, and say that if you get caught drag racing or reckless driving as defined in the Michigan Motor Vehicle Code, at MCL 257, blah, blah, blah that along with any other penalties, your car can be seized and, and, and we can do whatever we want with it. All I can do is add, add one sentence and it solves all of this. But uh, I, I don't know. I think what happens is some of these people either overthink things or they're told, hey, look, go do this. And they think that if they come back with a simple solution, it'll look like they didn't work that hard. I, I, I don't know. Because like I said, right now, drag racing, reckless driving, and careless driving and anything else that you want to describe that they're doing here, exhibitions of speed, they're already illegal by state law. And the city cops can write those things as state law violations. So all they got to do is add one sentence. Or if they want to, they can simply adopt the state law and add one. Whatever they want to do. There's, some, there's, there's ways to do this by simply adding a sentence that just says, along with the fines and costs and points, vehicle seizure. Add that one sentence. It's not even a sentence, it's a, it's a phrase. <laughs> but the gentleman who sent this to me, his name is Steve, it's not me, uh, said that he lives in Flint and that it's a problem uh, in his area. And I've spoken to people who live in Flint who've seen this, and they've said it's a problem where they are also. And so, you know, it's not just two guys drag racing. Um, I grew up very, very close to Woodward Avenue. And if you're in the Midwest or if you are a car guy, you might recognize that name even if you're not in Michigan. It's Woodward Avenue was the main thoroughfare that leaves Detroit and heads north into the suburbs. 
It's a popular cruising spot along with Telegraph, Grash, and so on. But uh, Woodward Avenue is famous for cruising, and occasionally you'd, uh, you'd be out there and some guy'd pull up next to you in a hot car, and you're in a hot car, and next thing you know, uh, nature takes its course, and guys are off into the sunset. But the big difference here is that there are places where people will go, and not only will the two cars go there, but people will go to watch. Spectators will go. And before you know it, there's a crowd of people someplace and people drag racing. Whereas that's not what was happening on the cruising strips of Woodward, Gratiot, Telegraph. So there's all that attendant stuff going on that is really what pushes it over the top. So I am in favor of them cracking down on this. And I've got no problem with any crime on the books where they say, if you, if you commit this crime clearly, you should forfeit whatever you use to commit the crime. Uh, you know, tools of criminal activity. So technically speaking, if you are drag racing illegally within city limits, and they've got a law on the books that says, if you do that, you can lose your car, then that's going to stand up as far as the law goes. Now, I, I'd be very careful not to drag race or do anything in that city that could be considered drag racing. <laughs> Mental note. Do not go into Flint in your Viper. The streets are so bad I couldn't anyways. But so, you know, that's the thing. But I, I'm just not sure about how it's drafted here. So we'll see what happens. I will update you if this law gets passed because I will then dig up a copy of the final version of the law. I hate to spend too much time opining on a rough draft because that can be fixed and who knows what will happen. So uh, Ron Fonger wrote it for MLive. Drag racing could cost drivers their vehicles and are proposed Flint ordinance change. Steve sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The day you stop racing is the day you win the race.